Many people see this crisis with North Korea as potentially the most dangerous moment since the Cuban Missile Crisis in terms of the risk of the use of nuclear weapons. My name is Zia Mian. I'm a physicist and researcher at Princeton University's Program on Science and Global Security. I've been involved in thinking about and activism on nuclear weapons issues since the early 1980s. There was a moment where the North Korean government was willing to negotiate with the United States and with other countries to give up all of its nuclear weapons, to dismantle its nuclear weapons factories, and actually signed an agreement to this effect with the Clinton administration. We could have built on that moment, that political possibility. What happened instead was that the United States got the Bush administration, and George Bush made his famous speech in which he listed North Korea and Iran and Iraq as the axis of evil. The invasion of Iraq convinced the North Koreans that the United States was no longer interested in a possible peace treaty and good relations, but actually wanted to destroy regimes that it saw as threats. The Iraq war they saw as proof of where the United States policy was going, and that's when you saw the acceleration by the North Koreans of their nuclear weapons program. It's very hard to see how a military dictatorship of the kind that rules North Korea, whose entire legitimacy is based on its willingness to defy the United States, is going to back down in this kind of situation. The onus is very much now in the United States to show restraint. We need to have members of Congress intervene. We need to have the public intervene. We have to have the United Nations intervene. The Europeans, the Chinese, as many people as possible need to speak up and say, we do not want this war, and we think that the United States and North Korea need to back off, stop issuing threats, and commit themselves to a peaceful and diplomatic resolution of this conflict. Because if democracies give up on the idea that we need to be able to find ways of living with, with each other, of talking to each other, of finding mutual common interests that tie us together in relations of reciprocity and mutual benefit, all you have left then is tribalism, and conflict where the other is always a threat and a potential enemy.